Our second inductee is Steve Crayley. Steve was born back in 1929 and passed away just weeks ago, March 7th, 2016. He began his professional baseball career in 1949 and pitched until retiring in 1960. Along the way, he played with and against many of the finest baseball players in the history of the game. Steve won wherever he played, including his finest season, 1953, when he went 19-2 and two pitching for the Binghamton Triplets with an ERA of 2.08. That earned him a promotion from the Eastern League to the New York Yankees, where he started and came out of the bullpen posting an ERA of 3.24. Steve helped New York win the 1953 World Series and earned a World Series ring for his contributions. Steve Crayley played before Major League Baseball's expansion when many players at the top of an organization's chart would have been starters in today's game, but unable to crack some of the lineups, including, of course, the New York Yankees, the powerhouse team at the time. He played with superstars like Yogi Berra, Whitey Ford, and Mickey Mantle, and played for the great legendary Casey Stengel. In 1957, Steve married Irene and made a home for his family, including Kathy, Steve, Tom, and Bobby in Johnson City. After retiring in 1960, Casey Stengel called Steve, offering him a chance to come back and pitch for the new team in town, the New York Mets. Steve declined as he had taken a job with IBM where he worked until 1991. He was an outstanding bowler and bowled four perfect games. He's the only person to bowl a perfect game and have earned a World Series ring as well. Steve was the official scorer at Nysig Stadium from the Binghamton Mets initial season until 2014. He was also a great dancer. He loved the polka and was a close friend of Grammy Award winner Jimmy Sturr. Steve's family threw a big birthday party for Steve with Jimmy bringing his band to perform. At the party, the folks from Jimmy Stir and Jimmy himself presented Steve with a CD of some of the great songs that Jimmy had recorded. One of my fa favorite memories of the parking lot one night after that at Nysig Stadium, long after everybody left, Steve said, you've got to hear this. He and I had worked the game that night, and I was walking out with him, and he said, you won't believe what I got from Jimmy Stir." So he puts a CD in his car, puts the window down, and cranks it up for the only two players, only two people left in the stadium parking lot, and it's like a rock show, only it's with Jimmy Stir and polka music. In the press box, it was like getting your master's degree in baseball. Steve, of course, was the official scorer. We had Pete Sylvester, who was good enough as a coach to have a field named after him. Lou Ferraro, three decades as a baseball coach. Kenny Sayer, who was a great statistician, and many others. Uh, John Reed, for example, who played pro baseball. But you gained an education each and every time. And it was a fun part of the game. We actually would enjoy sometimes rain delays because Steve would spin his tales about Mickey Mantle and Yogi and all the experiences he had playing for the Yankees. Steve passed away just a few weeks ago. I know he would love to be here tonight. Steve's sons, Steve and Tom, will accept on his behalf. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, committee. Uh, thank you, John Fox, one of my dad's biggest uh, fans over there. John, thank you so much. On behalf of the Crayley family and my dad, who I know is here spiritually because he wanted so badly to be here on this day. Dad was born 1929, April 18th. Another reason why he wanted to be here today, it's his birthday. On behalf of the Crayleys, we congratulate all the inductees. Uh, you guys should be, and, and man, very, very proud of uh, your accomplishments. I know we're very proud of Dad. Uh, you know, growing up with you know the the Binghamton legacy, the icon of Binghamton, was uh, all about pride. The the word pride defined my dad. He was proud of his heritage. He was a Croatian, and he loved, like Roger said, polkas and boy can he dance. If anybody knows my dad, he could just lights out on the dance floor. And if you ever went by his house in the evening, you would hear Jimmy Stir polka music playing very loudly at the house. He was proud to be a Yankee. He, he wore this ring. He, he wore this ring with pride for over 60 years, touching so many lives, uh, the, the young to the old. Uh, Dad just loved that honor of being a 150-pound 
kid out of Whiting, Indiana, soaking wet, 150 pounds, making it to the greatest team in all sports, like Brian said, to the New York Yankees. But most of all, Dad, he was a proud father, but he was a proud husband, and probably the most dedicated and loyal husband you could think of. And for the nine years that Mom was gone, Dad did not miss a day at that cemetery, bringing flowers, cards to Mom's grave. He was a proud father. He was a proud grandfather, an uncle, and a friend to so many. And that pride, to the few days before he passed, he laid on his bed and he threw the towel in finally. His dad was adamant he was coming to this event. But he told my brother and I, I want you to do three things. Accept the award, wear my ring, and believe me, this is magical. It's, it's, it is incredible. Uh, it's got a five on it because it's the fifth World Series that team won that year. And Brian could probably attest to this. I don't know if it's ever going to happen again. And he told us to share these words, which my brother's going to share with you now. Yeah, on March 1st, when we sort of realized he wasn't going to make it here today, which he told every doctor, every nurse, anyone that took, you know, took care of him, the last thing he said was, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there on my birthday. And uh, he is here because he lives in all those people that he's touched out there. And so many people have come up to us tonight and said so many beautiful things. And on March 1st, we decided uh, kind of sneaky like, you know, with the technology. We asked, Dad, so what would you say that night? And I know a few of the things are in the program and we recorded uh, everything that he, he would say tonight. So these are his words. Mr. Cashman, and it was Mr. Cashman. These are his words. In, with tears in his eyes, he said, Mr. Cashman, he said, I want to thank you for running the greatest organization on earth. I, would trade, I wouldn't trade my life for anybody's. I want, all the peop I want all the people in the Triple Cities to know, thank you for all that you have given me. All the accomplishments I've made is because of the friendships and the beautiful people here. I hope that I give back what they gave me because nobody can buy that. Most important for the youngsters, preach education, preach it, preach it, and have them stay in school. Whatever path you choose to go down, make sure you do it the right way. The gift of life is to think of others first before yourself. If people do that, then I think the world would be a better place to live in. Never mention baseball. Always talking about life. And lastly, he always ended every interview, and I know Jim writing the book, he's always saying this, thank you to the fans, because without the fans, the ball players wouldn't be who they are today. My dad loved telling stories, and I thought it would be only appropriate to share one that's about him that he hasn't heard. He had the opportunity through some family members to meet a young boy named Owen, who's autistic, lives in England. He is uh, obsessive, compulsive, and was kind of lost. And he got introduced to my dad and started really connecting with him and researching him. And he found out he was really upset that Bowman didn't make a baseball card of my dad. My dad's card is a Topps card. So he went and looked up the Bowman baseball card and this boy, 11 years old, I believe, Owen, he created a card and mailed 200 of them to, to the house. We were able to show them on the computer what it looked like. They look like a real card. They feel like a real card. I have one in my They arrived the afternoon of the morning that he died. He didn't get to see the cards. When they let Owen know that he had passed away, Owen went into his room, disappeared for a while. When they went in, they saw him on his bed, sitting with all Steve Crowley memorabilia wrapped around him with Owen in the middle. And I thought I'd share that story tonight because my dad had that power somehow when Mr. Cashman mentioned earlier that 
that, that Yankees is known worldwide. There's something about that Yankee thing. He took that little magic that he was given, and he touched a lot of people's lives, a lot of people sitting here and a little boy over in England. The Crowley family thanks you for being such great fans to our father. Thank you.